Welcome to For Formula One Sake, the F1 podcast that is absolutely open to replacing Ollie with Adrian Newey. Sorry, Ollie, but no, you know, be. I think it'd just be slicker, more aerodynamic. Mm-hmm. You can be his PA if you want. I don't think there's any trouble with, with Adrian Newey's PA. They had this, him and Christian Horner had the same PA. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's why he's leaving, because he knows everything. Oh. Allegedly. Welcome to For Formula One Sake, trying to get a race ban. What's the Twitter equivalent of crashing into people repeatedly? Buying Twitter. <laughs> oh, do it. <laughs> Welcome to For Bollard's Sake, the new Bollard-based podcast talking about the most exciting thing in F1. I fucking love Bollards. <laughs> I, I vote for a name change. It should be called fucking Bollards. Fucking Bollards. Bollard of the day was definitely that orange one. <laughs> Bollard with a vengeance. I think some of the Bollards didn't really do as well as that one Bollard, but that one Bollard was fucking great. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, making American Grand Prix great again. Oh, so good, this race. The best the best people at this race. I, get be- I can't do a Donald Trump. I'm not even going to try. Oh, no, go I- on, try it. <laughs> The, the best race in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast that doesn't like to mix politics and motorsport. Motorsport and politics have always gone together, so all of you on Twitter going, oh, don't mix your politics and your motorsport. They are intertwined since the beginning of motors. So shut up. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peer, and tonight from the Hard Rock Cafe in Hyde Park, I have bought a £35 cocktail that's given me a headache, but I can see the guitar on the wall from the guy who was once in Death Leopard. But we will be talking about maiden wins, Newey's bins, and food price sins as we discuss the Miami cash grab. I mean, Grand Prix. That's all to come. Joining me is a man who may not be welcome back to Pizza Express. It's Phil Tromans. Oh Have you been you sweating? <laughs> Before I get into the Pizza Express story, I, I just want to point out that that intro that Ollie wrote will make no sense on YouTube when it's blatantly clear that he's not in the Hard Rock Cafe. I <laughs> am. Oh, yeah. Look, the Miami Grand Prix was in the Hard Rock Stadium, so mm. I thought it would be funny oh, if we pretended right, 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 that we right, were right. in the Hard Rock Cafe, but not. Because sure. that's how bad we are. We not only pretend we're in the place, but we pretend we're in the wrong place. Oh, if I'd have known, I'd have put more memorabilia up behind me. Have you ever been to one? I a have. Rock I cafe, have yeah, I've been to loads. Oh, 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 oh shit! Really? <laughs> yeah, I've been to loads. I mean, I've been I to seem all to of keep them. ending up at them somehow, oh, right. either through work or when I'm on holiday, or up into the one in loads of other ones in America, one in Beirut, Rome, Oslo. Got a I, went all, one, I went to the one in London. The Beirut one was cool just because it's in Beirut and I really like Beirut. Oh. Yeah. It's right by the sea. Yeah, I went to one in London because my family were visiting and they really wanted to go. You know when you have family visiting and you do the kind of tourist thing? Mm. It was there um, or Planet Hollywood. Yeah, and it was just... I just had more sophisticated tastes than a mm. massive yellow cocktail, but it was fucking great. Well, speaking <laughs> of sophisticated tastes, yeah, Pizza Express. <laughs> so, oh, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> my wife was away at a Hindu this weekend. Not her Hindu, somebody else's Hindu. Um, so I was left with the child, and I thought, we'll take her to Pizza Express. She's been before, she really likes it. And she'd been <sighs> just a little bit whingy in the morning, which, you know, she's four. Mm. This happens fairly regularly. And so we walked around to the, around the corner to, to Pizza Express and sat down and ordered our food and everything. And um, she was like, Daddy, I want a cuddle, which she sometimes does. So I was like, okay, fine, go around and give her a cuddle. And I picked her up to give her a cuddle. And as I did so, she projectile vomited across most of the restaurant Ooh. while I was holding her. It was sort of like I'd, I'd opened a can of a bottle of Coke that somebody had shaken up. And it just went everywhere. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I kind of picked her up and went towards the toilet and realized I didn't know where the toilets were. So I stopped by the little sort of drinks prep area to ask the guys out. I'm really sorry, my daughter's just thrown up. Where are the toilets? And as I said this, she threw up again as I was sort of carrying her. And so there was a sort of a trail of sick throughout the entire branch of Pizza Express. Mm. Yes. Um, which, uh, which, which went very well. So um, she must have seen Prince Andrew. I mean, I was sweating more than Prince Andrew was, I tell you. I was well, like, oh that, at least God. that means you're not a pedo. Um, <laughs> Even though I was literally carrying a child, nobody <laughs> suspected <laughs> me more than... Who was being sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did so... You make, did you make anyone else sick? Because that's my favourite thing with vomit when someone I, else... I, don't, I don't know, to be honest, because I, I carried her to the toilet, like... Um, 
cleaned her up and then left as quickly as I could, even Did though like we hadn't bill? had any food left. No, no we, luckily we were there with other people. So I just said, it was my brother-in-law. I said, do you mind paying the bill? I'll sort it out later. And we just skedaddled together. Now I want to get your brother-in-law on the podcast because I want to get his version of this. Because <laughs> this, this is a story of a caring father who's trying to look after his daughter and take her back. Whereas I could see the people that you left on the vomit strewn table and be like, <laughs> oh, he's done it again. He's done it again. This every time so to, to avoid paying the bill. He makes his daughter sick. It's disgusting. <laughs> he did tell me that they took a, a surprisingly long time to clear it all up while they were still trying to eat their food. And that also, he was <laughs> trying not to laugh when I was explaining to the man, I'm really sorry my daughter's throwing up everywhere, as she was throwing up again. <laughs> Whereas on the next table, there's an there's a elderly couple going, this salad dressing is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Uh, anyway, she seems all right now, but I, I feel a bit rubbish. So maybe I've caught whatever she's got. So mm. good news. Oh. Well, just don't eat the dough balls. And beside him is a man who has moved furniture around. It's Terry Saunders. I've done that thing. Me and my partner are like um, rearranging our apartments and moving furniture. This story's not very interesting, but I, I did that thing of I'm realised I'm very much a minimalist, and mm. I've basically been getting rid of stuff. And I've got rid of a table, got rid of a bookcase, and the place looks fucking amazing right now. So I haven't got anywhere to put anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally just, as we were about to record the podcast, I need an adapter for the microphone to plug into my computer. And all I could remember is it was on the table that I don't have anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is why minimalism doesn't work for me. Like it, it, uh, we have this, my, my wife and I have these arguments because I like as much stuff as possible. More stuff, stuff on the wall, stuff on the floor, lots of stuff. Whereas she likes sort of like, no, zen What's the what's the Danish word Higger or whatever it is? Hygge. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with minimalism, hasn't it? No. Well, it's not about show what I know. I it's just know. it's about creating a cozy atmosphere, it's, it, which yeah, arguably which you do minimalism is more isn't. stuff. Yeah. Or so, less stuff. No. I I'm, I'm of the minimalist view. I would rather. I do you know what I want? I want those paper walls they have in Japan and just like a little table in the middle and sit on the floor. That's that sounds awful. No, that's I want to that's see new stuff Phil in the room the every time I look at it. <laughs> and I want to shave <laughs> my head and just eat rice. Okay, you I mean, it's a bit that. extreme just for a podcast segment, but, you know. I can't do that because all of this, everything you can see behind me in the Hard Rock Cafe belongs to my partner. All of it, literally fucking all of it. None of it's mine. Is your partner Joe Cocker? It's <laughs> <laughs> the first rock star I could think of. Joe Cocker. Bit of a, bit of a <laughs> random Jesus reach, God. I admit. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> what? I'm Googling. You're so young. Oh. Hugging the head in the head is on. Summer, su- hot now, summer in the city. Yeah. I, I, Fucking I sang, hell. I sang the wrong song first. <laughs> I was singing the heat is on. No, but I might tell her that she looks like uh, Joe Cocker. <laughs> We've got similar hair, actually. Is he still going? Good. Ollie, how are you? How's the Hard Rock Cafe that you're definitely in? <laughs> it's good. It's got some new doors on it. I, uh, oh. I I hung some doors this weekend, being a bank holiday. Wow, um, I've never which, hung a door. <clears throat> it's uh, it's not easy. No, don't do hung it. it. Having hung a door is very different to having hanged a door. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's important differentiation yes. to make. Don't hang the door. Only hung a door. Hang, hung what? Hung a door. That's one of the houses in Harry Potter, isn't it? I'm already confused. How how are you with DIY, Ollie? I'm actually very good. I I, I um, there you go. There's my trumpet. I'm blowing it. Uh, I don't mind doing that. Uh, Do you know what, but, but my dad's a carpenter, so um, oh, he, he's ooh, quite handy. useful, and he can kind of talk me through things. And there's things that I didn't know about doors that I, I I'll share with you because they're good to know. Did you know, right? When you hang a door, typically it should open sort of into the room. So when you open the door, if someone's doing something dodgy in there, like they got their penis out, it's not the first thing you see, right? So they can get their clothes back on. Typically, not exclusively, but that's the way you should do it. And also, hang the on, hinges. Hang on, hang on. Oh, go on, what, what, go on. What, no, no, I don't get that. So, if you open a door inwards and someone's wanking, you don't see them wanking. Yeah, yeah. The, the it's it, it it offers a a level of privacy. So, say that, let's use the bedroom as an example. No, let's use the bathroom. So, you open the bathroom door. Somebody's in there having a shit. They can see that the door opens before you glimpse them curling one out, right? And oh. they can go, oh, no, I'm having a shit in here. Close the door. And then you can close the door. That's why they would, should open onto the room like that, you see. That's did you know that doors can have locks? Did you know? There's the other one. And this is, you can tell if a door's been fitted by someone who knows what they're doing. If the hinge is nine inches from the bottom and six inches from the top. And if it isn't, it's a fucking charlatan. What? <laughs> <laughs> it looks about right. 
<laughs> Phil feels like I don't know what it's like in Germany. They might have different rules. I've got no idea. Well, it's metric, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be millimeters. Um, yeah, it looks about six to nine inches on mine, so maybe they do know what they're doing. Yeah. I will tell you, I'm looking at my front door right now, and it's got fucking massive hinges that I've never noticed before. Like, oh, it's probably a fire door, Phil. Probably got some fire. That's Terry, hinges. but yeah. Oh, so- <laughs> He says, with such confidence and knowledge, and then gets the name of the person he's talking to. Wrong. Brilliant. Uh, I get names. I now don't believe it's a fire door at all. No, it's I don't trust bullshit. anything you say. Yeah. It's not a fire door. I've just ruined all uh, my uh, good angels. Because it's very loud. News! <laughs> Shall we move on? Enough about fucking we doors. Yeah. Um, news. After months of waiting for it to happen, the collapse of Red Bull Racing is finally underway, with Design King Adrian Newey announcing his departure, simultaneously kicking Silly Season in an all-new gear. With 25 championships under his belt, F1's greatest car designer will be a free agent from next year, and everyone wants to know where he's going next. So, where's he going next? Hmm. Not I mean, Aston Martin. No, not Aston Martin, it would seem. Um... I, annoyingly, because I've had such a busy weekend of, of you know, carrying sicking children everywhere, uh, I've not checked in with the latest stories. But I saw a headline that seemed to suggest that maybe he was going to Williams, which would be a bit left field. Well, but, James Vowles of Williams has said, yes, we're talking to him, which doesn't mean anything, because that's like us going, yeah, we're talking to him. I mean, he's not answered the phone, but we've definitely left messages. Adrian, 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 Adrian. <laughs> do our podcast. Do you want to design our podcast? Just do the website. Um <laughs> As soon as, any, as soon as anyone of note leaves F1, we send them messages to ask if they want to come on the podcast. And weirdly, none of them have replied yet, let alone agreed. Some call it stalking, but mm. I think it's fine. Um, but Williams, there's a romanticism in, behind Williams. Because, okay, let, let's face it. He's leaving Red Bull, right? We, let's, let's see where we're at. He's leaving Red Bull. Yes, he's managed, although in a slightly weird way. Well, he's managed he's with not, his he's not leaving manager, immediately. Yeah, with his amazing manager, Eddie Jordan bizarrely who knew that was a thing they've managed to negotiate somehow that he doesn't have to do gardening leave so basically he finishes out this year as a red bull employee he'll go to a few races but mainly he's working on his supercar idea and then once that's finished he can fuck off wherever he likes next year which is a pretty strange deal because you think they want to lock him into gardening leave for like a year or so you would think so it feels like Whatever the thing that is going behind the scenes here, that he has just kind of... I don't want to be as crass as saying he's got photos or whatever, but it does feel like he's kind of gone, you know what, I'm going to go now, and you can stop me if you like, but I'd rather you didn't. Well, thinking about it, the weird thing about giving Adrian Newey gardening leave, like the whole point of gardening leave is like technology will move on, and so you're not taking cutting-edge ideas with you to your new employer. But having said that, all the cutting-edge ideas are his anyway. Yeah. Like, he is the cutting-edge. I, I think as well, like uh, that. If if that rumor about him going to Williams is true, I think that's brilliant. I think he. Sh- we've had this chat before about I mean, the knows, best drivers going to the shittest teams. So why not, yeah. you know, designers as well? Like if he well, goes to Williams, it, it, well, he can actually prove himself. Well, yeah. there are three main places I, that I think the Terry Saunders view is. So one, Ferrari with Lewis Hamilton. Let's face it, that would be an that amazing. Seems the obvious place. Too and easy. And wouldn't it? But wouldn't it be amazing? To go from Red Bull, Max Verstappen to Ferrari and Lewis Hamilton. I mean, come on, that's yeah. a good. Change. He's previously said he doesn't want to go there because he doesn't want to move to Italy. But I'm sure he could, you know, do something. He loves really sailing. Lit. We've got the internet now. Yeah, well, you fine. could sail there <laughs> every day. Just sail on an elite. You just yacht. see him at like 3 a.m. every morning. Like every 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 Sunday morning, he sets out from <laughs> Portsmouth. Get up the Vino, lads. I'm on my way. Uh, <laughs> So Where does second, he live now that's better than Italy? Well, Milton Keynes, probably. Fucking hell. I mean, <laughs> come on. The, it- the Italy of the Midlands, they call Who's it. Who's going for Milton Keynes over Italy? No, true. I, I agree. Yeah. So the second option is Williams. Now, obviously, there's a bit of Williams' backstory because he used to work for Williams. He designed a lot of good stuff for Williams. And mm. I kind of killed it. So. And a little bit of her, yeah. Mm. But one of the reasons he left Williams is because he said to Frank Williams, now deceased, and Patrick Head, still going, um, I want to have shares in the team. And they went, fuck off, we're Williams. (laughs) 
You don't have any shares in our fucking team. We built this up, and we're always going to be world champions, and that's not foreshadowing. <laughs> and then since then, they've gone down in the dumps. Yeah, and, and they're not family-owned anymore. And they're not family-owned anymore. And so I reckon he'll just, just, just to basically piss on Frank Williams' grave, he's going to go, you know what? I don't even need this, but I'm going to take half your old team, you old <laughs> And so that's what I think is happening there. And then the real wild card, because there's a thing about romanticism and that Adrian knew he likes to challenge and everything. And I, was, I don't know if this was on the Sky TV coverage, but on the Formula One TV uh, app coverage thing, they were doing the grid walk thing, and they, they cut to this close-up of Adrian Newey with Mario and Michael Andretti having a good old giggle about something. Ooh. And I'm suddenly thinking, if Andretti have got GM on their side, <laughs> and they've got all this stuff, and then they suddenly side Adrian Newey, can you imagine Formula One then turning down that team? Saying, no, no, it's, just, just it's not think, a realistic proposition. We don't think you're competitively viable enough. Oh. <laughs> so again, I feel like he might join Andretti just to fuck with everyone. That would be pretty <laughs> funny. But I am... I am up for late stage Asian Newey career because it seems like he's just going to fuck things up. <laughs> well, annoyingly, the, the chat he had with he had a chat with Martin Brundle on Sky, who collared him in the paddock, and seemed to suggest that he doesn't have any plans and he's like he's basically going to take life easy and do a bit of sailing and wait until something else grabs his attention. Now, how long that will be, I have no idea. But I, I came out of that thinking maybe he's not going to go to another team. Maybe he's not going to. Maybe he's just going to design boats or just sit in his shed for a bit until he decides. Oh, I'm going to make a spaceship or something. Sit in his shed. The only th- probably well, a pretty is, good shed, isn't it? His shed is Milton Keynes. <laughs> the uh, the only thing is Adrian Adrian Eddie Jordan also says something on the lines of he might not go anywhere. Which, if I know anything about Eddie Jordan, <laughs> means he's definitely going somewhere. <laughs> How, how did he sound, Terry, uh, when Eddie Jordan was saying this? Oh, no, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? That West was Eddie Trump. Jordan. And in fairness, <laughs> a lot of people say that when Eddie Jordan speaks anyway. <laughs> uh, well, that'll be very interesting to see what happens. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if we're going to find out soon or if this is going to drag on for ages. Yeah, it'll, dra- it'll drag on. Oh, we'll drag on. Can't wait. Um, it. Is it because I is Spanish? <laughs> Fernando Alonso has said that Formula One stewarding has an anti Spanish bias, complaining after his first lap clash with Hamilton in the sprint that he wouldn't be penalised because he's not Spanish, despite ruining a few people's races. <sighs> every this now is and again. so weird. <laughs> every now and again. And, uh, and it's, it's more now than again over the course of his entire career, but. Alonso just comes out with some absolute bollocks, doesn't he? Of all the thing, of all the conspiracy theories you could level against Formula One, and there are loads of them, many of which I think are, are you know potentially viable. The fact that they're anti-Spanish was not one I'd ever considered before. Mm. The only thing that Very got me specific. is that, yeah, when I read this, I thought to myself, I don't give a shit about the Spanish, <laughs> and then I realised maybe maybe he's right. Maybe, maybe I you're not actively it. targeting the Spanish, are you? No, I don't even know they exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's just southern southern France to you, isn't it? I don't think I know any Spaniards. I mean, I know some Fernando Americans Alonso who were colonised by the Spaniards. Yeah, that's mm. true. For, was Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz? What Carlos Sainz? Who Carlos, won a race Sainz this year? Carlos Sainz, who won a race, and did, but did get a penalty this race, yeah. admittedly for driving like an ass. But uh, it's just but the it's, stewards did say it was because he was Spanish. Didn't they? I don't. They, were, oh. <laughs> they didn't even call him Sainz. They just called him the Spaniard. See what Alonso likes. He doesn't like to have like one big penalty. He likes to have like lots of lots of tiny penalties that you can share amongst friends. Maybe two or three dishes each. <laughs> <laughs> Is Kevin Magnuson Spanish? It's honorary. But he's he's honorary Spanish this week. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a Spanish sounding name. I don't. <laughs> <What's it>? Magnuson. <laughs> <laughs> that's Italian. Magnuson. No. That's, that's more Italian. That's more oh, Italian. God. Yeah. You went even more Italian. Magnuson. But I don't. I mean, the thing with Alonso is you sometimes think that he's always got a plan. Like, whenever he does something, it's because, like, in a few weeks' time, they'll be like, oh, that's why he did it. And I'm, I'm intrigued to know what's happening here. I he's think he might be run for to do president of Spain. No, I think Stroll is going to come out with something anti Spanish. It's going to be what he uses. To Something anti-Spanish. Get rid of Lance Stroll. Fucking hate bulls. No, they the Spanish. They hate bulls too. They kill them. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking love anyway. bulls. <laughs> anyway, that was 
There was that. I don't really have an opinion. I just think it's weird. Inflation! Miami Grand Prix food prices were just fucking stupid and deserve to be ridiculed, so let's discuss a menu that priced main lobster rolls at $280! Fucking hell! A fruit refresher at $190 and the ability to add caviar to any existing menu item for a cool $400. I mean, you know, you expect when you go to a major sporting event that, you know, a burger is going to be at least a tenner mm. and a beer is going to be eight quid and all this kind of stuff. But this 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 shot of the price list, which I presume was in like Paddock Club or something. Yeah. Which, which really to would. be honest, from I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky enough, admittedly not for a while, but I'm very lucky enough to have been to Paddock Club a couple of times. And I remember all the food being free. So this is slightly this confused. Is what I me. thought if you're in the if you're in the bit where you pay twenty grand to get in there, I don't want to pay two hundred quid for a fucking banana. But it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, this is a status thing, isn't it? This is just saying, look, I can pay two hundred and eighty dollars for a lobster roll. They're not actually bothered about it. the people that are in there. Don't give. They're a not fuck. even eating it. They're not even eating I it. Even like they're just rolls. going. They're just going. Yeah, I'll have ten lobster rolls. I'm not going to eat these. But you know, I'm just going to throw them at Fernando Alonso. Yeah. I, I I, that's that, all it is, isn't it? It's just that sort of like American flashy, stupid. So I mean, there's a markup, and then there's this, which just seems fucking <laughs> bags. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> 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 that would fit a raw nerve here. Ollie really doesn't like overpriced food. Um, <laughs> it just seems so ridiculously overpriced. Like, that, that, what, what do you? What do you? Did you think nobody would comment on this? But this is the thing. It's like going like if I, if I was going to, if I was doing a round. Now, and so I'll go get some food. Do you want some food? All right, Phil. Do you want um, do you want some main lobster rolls? Great, great. Uh, no, I don't like them, but thanks. Okay, obviously. Uh, I just asked for it without mayo <laughs> or lobster. <laughs> the the mayo is a mortgage. And I'm like, oh, Ollie, um, fruit refresher, one ninety. Do you want that? Okay. And, oh, Ollie, Ollie, do you want caviar on yours, or should I get you an Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> caviar and fruit refresher. Mm, no, that's I'll what have the, the Xbox, would have. Please. Look, it did say on the menu you could add it to any item, so mm. I would be adding caviar. I mean, yeah, hey, glass of water, not, not even caviar, please. not even food, just any item <laughs> at that kind of price. I'd expect you. I'd expect them to like. I'd like you to add it to one of the Formula One cars, please. Yes, paying four hundred quid here is the least you could do. It is ridiculous. It's just flashing cash. I mean, the whole all the American races were well, possibly with the exception of Austin because I don't know how much it costs there. But I remember Vegas was insane or oh, expensive yeah. to get tickets and stuff like that. I believe Miami's the same. And it's just like, oh, uh, why? What are you? What are you? Are you trying to embrace the idea of like flashy bastards? What's it's going on? It's because you can say I can afford a two hundred and eighty dollar lobster roll. I don't care. Like that's that's all it is, and it makes me very very angry. If scum. you've ever bought one, you are scum. If you've ever been to Miami. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever been to Miami. No, Terry has. You're scum. The nearest I've got to this is I went to Le Mans and I ate a paella that gave me such violent food poisoning that I was I was basically like your daughter in Peter Expressville. <laughs> <laughs> both ends. But both ends. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In, Bo- in Bordeaux Airport. Catherine oh, Airport. oh, it's not God. even a good the airport. The Ryan Airgate as well. Which, oh. which by the way, the has, the toilets, has the toilets after security. So I tell you now, I don't know how I got through security without getting searched because I looked like I was hiding something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're only allowed 100 mil of liquid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to be in a clear plastic bag. <laughs> Tell us how wrong we are. You can do so via social media. We're at For F1 Sake on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and still on Facebook. So that's still going. With your mum. Or you can email us wrong at ff1s.com. <laughs> Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer at the Whinging Moustache? Imagine a pub. Not that one. Think of a flat roof in a council estate kind of pub. In there are three old men staring up at the Sky Sports TV screen watching the F1. And even though everybody else wants the football on, no one dares change the channel or else they'll get a pull cue up them. <laughs> that's the whinging moustache. At least that's the vibe. In reality, it's an Apple subscription where you can get ad-free versions of this podcast. So join us at the whinging moustache. Head to Apple Podcasts and hit the subscribe button. I don't know why I'm holding back laughter. And there's a free seven-day trial right now. Or if you want to just say thanks for forcing you to try and figure out what TikTok is, you can donate a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Is that $400 making a stain in your pocket or did you just splash out on some caviar? It's neither. 
you need a doctor, Dr. Teams at your service. <laughs> <laughs> and people say we're convoluted. Bollard! The big surprise of the race was the new Bollard team, who in a few short laps got close to Max Verstappen than anyone has managed all year. Manager Bob Bollard said Bollard, 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 because Bollards can't talk or run. They just say Bollard. Are you right, Ollie? I feel like you're taking this team segment seriously. Can we do a line of Bollard team wear, please? Can we just have Bollards? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Anybody, do you want to add on the Bollards? No. Oh, fuck no. me, that was <laughs> really funny. I don't even know what you're talking about, Ollie. <laughs> Gone completely off beast. <laughs> McLaren. Lando Norris only went and won the race by having an aggressive strategy, some safety car luck, and managing to not do one of his signature fuck-ups. Oscar Piastri had the ignominy of being ahead of Norris and would have been top of the list to reap the rewards, but then he went and spoiled it by saying something stupid like, box, 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 before the safety car. Uh, I mean, okay. I mean, there's lots to talk about with McLaren. Should we start with Norris and his maiden win? Because well done to the lad. He drove very well. Um, well done, son. And, and it well does done. seem like the car has taken a big old chunk of a step forward, which is good news. I don't know how much is Red Bull not being very good at this circuit <coughs> versus how much McLaren's new upgrades have made the car super good. But it did seem to work, and London Norris drove very well. However, he did get a... Big old slice of luck with the safety car. Which I have no problem with. That's what it's all yeah. about. Yeah, to finish still, first. First, still you have though, to have a big slice of luck from the safety car. Still, though, when Verstappen wins, he typically wins by 20 or 30 seconds ahead of everybody else. Yeah, right? and he didn't. So, and he couldn't catch up. So, Well, he damaged bit, his car, which didn't it, help. Yeah, a bit, but it's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? New he announces he's leaving. And, <laughs> and immediately the, car, the, car the car's fucked. Did he just go in and go, that little thing that I <laughs> I make Boop. cars go faster with, I'm just going to turn that off. Yeah, he's just taking it off. There's, there's one little seemingly inconsequential bit of like tape or something. It's just a screw. And knew he's just gone, <laughs> little screw. <laughs> now they've lost a second. Quarter turn to the left. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. I love that idea. I only knew but... he knows the secret. Yeah. It's like one. Of, it's like the KFC secret herbs and spices, or Coca Cola recipe, or something like that. Maybe it Whereas, is spices. He just sprinkles it on the. <laughs> it's just paprika. Whereas Lewis, Lewis Hamilton <laughs> just put the same bit of tape on the Mercedes, and it's got like, <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking Bronco. It, well, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to. Uh, well, not for these reasons, anyway. I don't want to slag off Lando Norris too much because he did try very well, and the car was very good, and he he, he won the race. Like he, although he got into a good position from the safety car, he pulled out a lead after the safety car. I think we all expected Verstappen to go flying past him, and he didn't. Yeah. Um, so, you know, well done, Lando. You've you've won a race. Uh, Finally! At, at, at only the 110th attempt. <laughs> um, will he win any more? He said will he. Nah. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, but... I was just so confused because I was watching the race, merrily watching the race, and like Piastri was was he in second? Piastri was doing better. I would Piastri argue that really Piastri well. was having a better race than. <clears throat> and I swear. Uh, and then he got nobbled by science and and didn't get the rub of the green on the safety car. But I swear that I was watching the race and I was paying attention, and suddenly Piastri was down in sixth or something, which means I presume he had a pit stop. Yes. But. Either the, the footage I was watching cut out or I just was zoning out because I was just there going, what the fuck's going on? Why is he sick? It was quite boring until the safety car. And then suddenly, wham, bam, thank you, runs the safety car. And then Norris is in the lead. And I was just like, and obviously this is how it works. You know, you get the rub of the green, you don't get the rub of the green, but that's got to hurt, isn't it? Yeah. Just being like, if we'd have lapsed. I think, he, I think Piastri actually drove really well this uh, yeah. this um, this race. Uh, and then, yeah, he, he, he was unlucky with the safety car and then he got nobbled by Science, who got a penalty for it, which we'll get to. Um, uh, but I, I think it was overall a really good display from Piastri, who was as good, I would say, as Norris, if not maybe and better. And he, he didn't have all the updates on his car. Did he not? His car was slower. Oh, that is interesting. Mm. Mm, that is interesting. But there is another elephant in the McLaren room that we should address. Uh, a large... Uh, shall we say racist <laughs> orange elephant 
which was I, I with a tiny trunk. <laughs> yeah, Barbar, because he, he still wears a stupid a red back. hat. What a callback to Barbar. I don't think I've thought of Barbar since 1988. Does Barbar uh, wear a stupid red hat? Probably. Uh, actually, no, maybe it does, actually. Um, oh, yeah, it says Make yeah, America Great so Again. Yeah, so randomly, mm. <laughs> randomly Donald Trump was in the McLaren garage, which yeah, I, I, I would love to see the reaction of the PR guys when they were told that this was happening, because I presume this is all Zach Brown. Well, weirdly, it seems to have been for, for the FIA, doesn't it? Because he was there with um, uh, the FIA people. What, Ben Suleim and all that lot? Yeah, and... They kind of, it feels a bit, it's because McLaren put a weird statement out saying we're not a political outfit, blah, blah, blah. FIA came around with Donald Trump and we just, we just let him stay because it turns out he's very charming. <laughs> Didn't have to shake his hand though, did he? It was so bizarre because, I mean, the thing is, Zach Brown has come out before and said he doesn't want to overly, to have overt political statements or words to that effect in F1. And then you get one of, not just a Republican candidate for the presidency, but one of the most controversial politi- uh, politicians in the Western world. history yeah. that I can think of. Uh, and, I mean, uh, what do you expect? I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a vote for Hitler there. Just, just say it. <laughs> yeah, that's why you said one off. Oh, yeah, I one off. I can't say that here. I can't say that here. I think you can mention the fact that he existed, yeah. Um, but like certainly, you know, certainly of modern times. Like, how how did you expect this to go? And obviously, you know, this has completely divided the internet with, you know, a lot of people going, "What are you doing? I've supported this team for ages, and this, you know, Trumps is Trumps is uh, Trumps is Trump Trumps outlook on life is completely in contrast to my own, and this makes me think less of the team. And then there's you know other people who've been like, "This is great." I mean, he's, yeah. they literally welcomed in a man that is defending himself in court at the moment. Yeah, literally the following day was held uh, um, in contempt um, of court. Uh, yeah, exactly. And in, Has inciting myriad, hatred in the country that they're racing Myriad history of, uh, of, of just awful behaviour. Yeah, in a sport that has historically been criticised for not being diverse enough and all that kind of stuff, and you welcome yeah. a guy like that. I mean, You're fairness, going to look like a bunch of c**ts. You should yeah. have just not shook his hand. It's not hard. Yeah, oh, well, this is speci- and this is specifically Lando afterwards, and... and I think Terry, you made the point that um, racing drivers live in a bit of a bubble, and you could conceivably think that Lando doesn't really know who this guy is, and that just he was the once the president. And I mean, I suppose if you're being very generous, you could think that. But like, then Lando came out afterwards and said, "Oh, it's he's good. You've got to respect him." It's like, do you though? Yeah. Do you though? Yeah, because I got quite angry then. I got quite feel- angry, and I th- and I think McLaren fans should feel quite angry because it takes away from from what is a, a genuinely impressive McLaren uh, McLaren achievement. But I agree, this does feel a bit like when Pastor Maldonado won a race for Williams, and then the garage set on fire. Yes. Similar kind of feel. <laughs> like, hey, we want a race. Oh shit! What's that in the garage? <laughs> What's that horrible orange thing? <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull. A disastrous weekend for Max Verstappen in which he finished second. Ugh. The car <laughs> suffered some PTSD when the bollard came along and the poor RB20 thought that Christian Horney was trying to fuck it again. <laughs> Perez nearly took out Max, but disappointingly missed by inches. Are the cracks showing? Oh, yes. Oh, they're showing. I mean, this <laughs> might just be a one-off. They're, you could they're... put your fist through this crack, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> Calm down, Christian. Um... <laughs> you t- it's like that WhatsApp you saw. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it could just be coincidence that, you know, like Singapore last year where the RB just wasn't very, where Red Bull just wasn't very good. Maybe they're just not that good this time at Miami for whatever reason. But in the week where New is leaving, Perez almost, almost oh. took them both out of the first corner. And if he'd have hit, I mean, and it was millimetres that he missed him by at the first corner. And that wouldn't have been a small shunt. That would have been that would have been both cars out of the race, because he monumentally fucked up that first corner and was very lucky not to hit anyone. Um, and then, yeah, the car not quite handling right, taking out the bollard, damaging the car, not having the pace. Which is what I mean. The bollard alone is very unmax like, isn't it? He's not I done mean, stuff like that for a number of years. No. He used to do it all the time, but it has been a long time since I've made him seen him make any kind of like mistake. And you've got to say that's what it was, because he could have just gone through the cutoff area that loads of other people were taking. And I'm also really enjoying the uh, Red Bull now pretending that Adrian Newey doesn't do anything. 
<laughs> like as all these statements go. Well, you see, we've got a very deep technical team, and Adrian is basically he's, he's like a consultant. He comes in every now and again. He's got his own office. He doesn't even know where it is. You know, he does come in every now and again, and we just like humour him. He's like an old, but he hasn't got any ideas. He's shit, isn't he? He's shit. He doesn't. He doesn't do anything. We and you go back like to him. when he got his contract renewal last year, and they're like, the secret source of Red Bull is Adrian <laughs> Newey. His genius over twenty years <laughs> is what makes us great. <laughs> Without him, we would be nothing. And now they're all like, who, who? <laughs> Adrian Oldie, more like. We. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, d- I mean, you know, the next race is what Imola. Uh, we'll see how they do there. But and and you know, even a disastrous race still have them finishing second and fourth. So perspective, I suppose. But it's 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 happening. It's happening. I'm excited. Ferrari. The Ferraris had streaks of that shade of highlighter blue you'd get in a multi-pack before school returns but never used. They did well in the race but really should have been the ones to capitalise on Red Bulls. The colour scheme. Uh, Not as many uh, Miami colour schemes as I was expecting. Only two. Them and the RBs. So it's basically to do with the North American racing team which is like an old historic thing that Ferrari have had for decades where they just have cars, they have Ferraris that are blue. But it was a pretty half-assed execution, I thought. Yeah, because didn't they? They put out a video, didn't they, of signs of Leclerc like getting blue. Well, overalls the blue, the blue suits look yeah. great, and I was like, "Do the cars that color? They would look." That, can you imagine yeah, it the Ferrari great, in that, it? Yeah, yeah. in a metallic version of that blue? Mm. Would look lovely. But no, they just kind of like dotted a bit of it on the regular red car, and it looked like a dog's breakfast. Or my personal preference is if they'd have gone down the blue man group route, <laughs> which is shaved their heads. Before, and- no, they, they, have, they, have, they have the car in red as normal, and just before it leaves the pits, they just like throw buckets of <laughs> paint over them, <laughs> smearing over it. It'd be like an art piece. It'd be like flow viz, but blue. I would have preferred that they shaved their heads and painted themselves entirely, blue, entirely in blue and then just did percussive mime uh, all the way through the weekend. That would I mean, been, that's also good. That would have been great. I would have been. Particularly in the media special, special helmets, which is just them with blue faces. <laughs> that would have been good. I thought you hated special helmets. You said this in the last episode about the panda. That's what your dating profile says, isn't it? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like special helmets. I just like ordinary, normal, round, hard ones. <laughs> Look, we get enough comments just lately about how we're lacking a female voice on this podcast. Do we? So, yeah, we get quite a lot. And we, we we shouldn't be leading into this by talking about special dirty helmets. Oh, sorry. I, I, I just put the word dirty. <laughs> yeah, where did that come from? <laughs> it's your preference. Just the dirtier, <laughs> the better. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> forgotten that they actually. Forgotten that they actually just, got, <laughs> just images of Bella. That is just. Your head. <laughs> <laughs> just like. Malt- I am thinking of Lance Stroll. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so the driving. So yes. Leclerc was Leclerc was fine. Got third. Fine. Um, Science had a bit of a weird one. Proper lost his cool with Piastri, which is oh, a bit the radio un- message is fucking him. amazing. Yeah, did they accuse him anti-Spanish bias? Was it? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention, but well, he was just like, oh, you know, well, he did one of those. Don't talk to me. I'm gonna get him. And then he went and crashed into him. You're like, oh, no, sh- I think we should have. Kept I seem surprised that he got the penalty <laughs> instead of Piastri. Yeah. Very weird. It wasn't the cl- weird. Science has been actually really good this season. I've been super impressed with him until this race. But do you think that might be because the pressure's on? Like, cause, I mean, we we can maybe have a little signs moment here because he he's fucked, isn't he? In well, terms of yeah. future, I mean, he's going to end up at Audi, which is going to be at well, least, well, is he? I think so. I've, I I now have nothing to back this up, but I'm sure I heard uh, in the chaos of my weekend that he turned down Audi. Oh, I don't know if that was official or a rumor. I think it's probably a rumor because I'm sure it would have been everywhere if uh, if it had been official. But I thought I'd heard that. He says very quickly, googling it, science Audi. Hmm. Oh, because one thing we actually we completely didn't talk about. We'll talk about it when we get to Haas. Is that science has confirmed a driver? Uh, sorry, Audi has confirmed a driver. But we'll get to that. Oh yeah, that should have been the news. Yeah, we missed that. We haven't had time to talk about it, but we have now, so I can't use it. But we'll get to that. So, um, yeah, so GP fans uh, is one of the outlets, <clears throat> which is normally reasonable, I think, has revealed that 
science, according to insiders, has turned down an Audi offer because he wants to go to a more competitive team. Which how do you turn an offer like that? Do you reckon? How do you think he did it? Did he just go, nah, or nah, formal letter? Or... <laughs> How's it I'd work? Say, yeah, probably on the phone or with an email. To How whom it may email? concern, dear sir or madam. Yeah, I just an auto response. Your kind offer. Nah, yes. Hmm. It looks like you're trying to sign Carlos Sainz. Instead of an out of office, it's an out of contract negotiation room. <laughs> that announcement. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> If your call is from anyone from if your if your email is about anything other than an Audi contract, please contact my agent at. Um, yeah, so he's he's apparently not going there, but that's not official. Um, uh, we've previously talked about Red Bull being the obvious place for him, but for the same reasons that we said, why would he want to go to Mercedes? Now, I'm increasingly thinking, why would he want to go to Red Bull? Yeah, because that looks a lot riskier than it did a few weeks ago. Mm. And the thing is, Mercedes only want to give him a one year as his, as his whole and career has been want, one and, year. And the, the point about why would you want to go to Mercedes still stands. Yeah, exactly. Mercedes don't seem to have a clue what they're doing and they really want to sign Antonelli because, mm. because and whatever. Ferrari don't want him. McLaren uh, don't have a space. Red Bull are, are falling apart. I mean, I'm starting to think Audi is the best bet. <laughs> I mean, you might be right. Aston Martin? That means been enough well, stroll. Do you think he'll go? I mean, he's yeah. how, he can't. How long can he hang on? Uh, oh, rich people can hang on for a long yeah. time in jobs where they're not. Daddy especially when they're related rules. to the... Rules. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Mercedes. Mercedes should basically now admit that they don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. Sometimes the car is great, sometimes it's not even there. This weekend was both with some flashes of Hamilton brilliance and also George Russell. <laughs> It's really weird. It's really weird. It's because previously we've talked about how they'll they think they've got an idea and they'll make a small tweak and then they'll make the car rubbish. This time, it seemed like the car would be good for like a handful of laps. Was it in qualifying? Hamilton was like right up there. Mm. Yeah. And then in the very next session, having changed nothing, the car was nowhere. Like, what's going on? It, it's, it's going it's from gotta, good to shit without anything changing. It's got to be someone fucking with them, isn't it? <laughs> It's like we're talking about when Newey having that bit of tape. There's like someone <laughs> in the Mercedes. You know, you know when they have that that new thing in the last couple of years of the kind of the VIPs who have to stand behind like the the, the barrier like they're in the post office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like one of them has just got a button, and they just said, "Right, if you want to fuck up, Lewis, right, press that button. It'll go slow. It'll, it gets really angry." When I was at school in the '90s, I had one of those watches that could had a TV remote control on it and you could yes. tune it in I always wanted to the one what would it be infrared or RF or whatever it is you could tune it into the frequency and because I was you know not one of the naughty kids at school I could get away with just sitting there just going rah, 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 rah. And whenever they brought out the TV screen with the VHS to watch a video I would just fuck with it and it would drive the teachers insane and I wonder if somebody has one of those watches. garage has got one of those watches <laughs> and randomly they've programmed the car using the same technology as uh, VHS players from the 90s it's not the Williams <laughs> yeah. Exactly, Williams, I believe. <laughs> they, they go, oh, infrared. Oh, we don't have any of that new technology here. Thank you very much. <laughs> this car is powered by steam. Seriously, <laughs> it's though, made like, of cast iron. But, but if if that is the case, and that you know nothing changes, that kind of thing, it, is it feasible that it could be some kind of genuinely some kind of software glitch? Because it does sound like like sometimes my computer is just a twat for no reason. Oh, no, mine is as well. So could I mean, it be something there is a like lot, that? There is a lot of software in there, but you'd think with the amount of debugging skills they've got, they'd be able to find, they'd be, they'd be able to trace what was happening mm. and, and see that it was... Because I, I would be very surprised if, you, if it didn't log every single decision it made and you could go back through it and find it. I wonder if it's yeah, just but, like unbelievably sensitive to tyres. Maybe. But, I, but the thing is, that thing about the bug or the logging everything is true, but the thing is... I can't, again, I can't remember I was reading this now, but the amount of data that a Formula One car produces during a session it's a lot. is so much that it's, it's more about not having the data. We, we think magically that they go, oh, the computer says there's an error on the tyre. Whereas actually, it's you've got a team of data scientists going through terab- petabytes of data for each thing. And it's it's about knowing where to look with the, the time you have, isn't it? It's about kind of going, right, we've got another race next week. I could spend the whole week looking at this one corner of the car's tyres or, you know, I could make a cup of tea. What do you want? Hmm. Um, they have to make a decision. So it's more about management, isn't it? And I'm starting to feel that Toto Wolf... Just was blagging it the, the whole time. 
A little bit. Because do you remember in the, in the in the Hamilton Rosberg days, they would often make a lot of fuck ups, but they were so far ahead that the fuck ups never really affected them. Yeah. Like they'd have a really bad pit stop or they'd do some stupid strategy, but because the engine was so powerful and no one else was any good, they just could make it effortlessly up. won. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering if they were they weren't quite as good. The team wasn't as with their whole no blame culture, which you know now I'm thinking it could do with a bit of fucking blame, mate. You know? I think it's <laughs> sold, yeah, f- scapegoat culture. Yeah, we need proper Ferrari. Need a patsy. Need, I need people to be fired for this. <laughs> Aston Martin Lance Stroll was better than Fernando Alonso this weekend. We don't get it either, and yet still finished a number of places behind him. Um, but he was quicker. He was out qualified him both. Both races. How do you out-qualify Fernando Alonso? I mean, Alonso maybe wasn't on his game. He was too busy trying to come up with anti-Spanish conspiracy theories. <laughs> and Stro- uh, Stroll, we've said it before, every now and again, he's all right. Yeah, maybe just one of those races where he's all right. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to it, but he wasn't, he wasn't the only driver that had his random once-a-year good drive this, this weekend. So There was uh, a bit, actually, uh, uh, the, that was quite exciting in the race with Alonso. Uh, was it... Um, Alonso and I want to say it was Gasly he was trying to overtake but I can't remember and it, but it was actually particularly interesting and I was like ooh, ooh well, I is, felt like race, he was going to go off ooh I must say this race especially the first half of it had so much good overtaking or good battles in the first kind of maybe half an hour oh this was like in the last 20 laps I think but I, I'm trying to I'm uh, trying no, to remember well, Stroll, Stroll got stuck behind Gasly for a bit so it's probably him um, no, no, it was definitely it was definitely Alonso at some point, at one point, it? but I can't remember who he was oh, trying to overtake. But anyway, it was particularly exciting because I thought at any minute he looked really angry. He probably was running out of Spanish conspiracy theories or anti-Spanish <laughs> conspiracy theories to come up with. Maybe that's what happened. Nobody expects the Spanish <laughs> Inquisition. <laughs> but I just thought he was going to go off. It was, I mean, he was literally like he was so close. But the racing was good because Miami's been pretty shit the last was, two times. Isn't it? it was all right. I, I, I was. Mildly entertained for the start, and then I got quite bored until the safety car. But I th- okay, I think we're talking two different things because I think the the race itself wasn't that interesting, but it felt like there was a lot of things happening. Yeah, does that make sense? There was a lot of battles. There was a lot of lower, lower down the field I overtakes. Mean, uh, sort of. like there's a lot of overtakes. Now that might not necessarily be a good there thing. There were more overtakes than maybe I expected, but I started with. Very low expectations. Yeah, maybe. So maybe they just surpassed him. But still, I still think it's like a meh weekend generally. The, the result was interesting. <coughs> and uh, But I, I don't think that was anything to do with the track. I think it was just where F1 is at the moment. Are you allowing your Pizza Express experience to cloud the entire Maybe, weekend? to be honest, because yeah. I, when I watched it on... Uh, actually, no, this was yesterday. So this was before the Pizza Express um, oh. shenanigan. This was just a weekend of looking after a child on my own, but... Um, I was quite tired by the time the uh, the race came on. <laughs> oh. And the also rans RB. The car was sponsored this weekend by Global Hypercolor, and Ricardo was amazing in the sprint. But then the lucky wishes must have ran out because he spent the race being shit. That was a weekend of two halves for Ricardo, wasn't it? My word. I still don't understand how he was so good in the sprint and in sprint qualifying. He qualified. Do you think up. everyone just? Everyone else forgot how to drive. No, they all just went, you know, it's maybe it's his birthday and they went, I'll tell you what, let's give him a treat. Let's just let him I bet he really I bet he really likes Miami. So they were like, you know, he's having a lovely time. Let's let's do something special for him. Because they're a lovely bunch we'll of the sprint, but then we will fuck him up in the race. <laughs> we'll we'll give him this and then we'll show him how bad he actually is. It was it was really weird because he was genuinely really good for like sprint qualifying and the sprint. And then it went into qualifying, which was the same day as the sprint. It was like a few hours later, and it was terrible. <laughs> and he ended up starting last with some penalties that he had from the last race, admittedly. But he was like, he went out in Q one. He was nowhere. Very strange. But Sonoda, very odd. Different story. Sonoda was all right. He's doing all right. Yeah. I mean, he's not getting. He's not getting even in the conversation about getting the Red Bull drive. He's not doing yeah, that. I well. think. I think. I think he is. I think. I think he. Well, they might give it to him now because so many of the good drivers will now go. Ah, no, you're all right. Yeah. Um, so maybe he will get it now, because <laughs> because they'll just want anyone who's not absolutely terrible. But uh, special livery, global hypercolor style. I actually quite liked it. Thoughts? I didn't. Okay. Alpine. Alpine did much better than they have been all season, and finally got a point. Still shit though. 
don't remember seeing them much. Well, they were on the start. Ocon and Gasly were like, oh, about to crash. Yeah, and I was yes, like, there was on, there was like a whole lap where they were side by side. That was good. But then they didn't, which I thought was even better. Well, apparently they've got the car under the weight limit now, which is handy, and now they're faster because they're carrying only seven races sugar. in or whatever we are. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> Magnussen has clearly got a wedding he wants to go to and is trying to orchestrate a race ban to get the weekend off. We can't think of another reason why he'd do so many crimes aside from trying to impress Trump. <laughs> he has turned into the bad boy of F1. He's just he just like, doesn't give a shit, does he? doesn't, does he? He's just like, I mean, I, I, I've defended some of his shithousery in the past just saying, look, like you're allowed to make yourself difficult to overtake, but I think he probably crossed the line a little bit this weekend. <laughs> well, you know, he didn't probably cross the line. He literally crossed the line That's several true. times. Yeah, um, yeah, like fucking about with Hamilton in the sprint race and then literally taking out Logan Sargent. Um, and you've got to feel for Sergeant. Like, Sergeant, you didn't need to do that, Kevin. Sergeant would have crashed himself fairly short. <laughs> like, you didn't need to punt him off. So, and now he's got. He's, I think he's got ten of twelve of ten points, and it's twelve when you get a ban. So he's he's not far off. Yeah. Getting the hoof. In which case, who are they going to bring in? Ollie Behrman again? Yeah. I saw some suggestions that maybe. Uh, I saw some weirdly. I saw some Antonelli suggestions, but I'm not sure how that would work because he's a Mercedes driver. So how would that no, work? It'd be Bevan because they're going to get Bevan. Yeah, exactly. Year, so I don't so. know what that was all about, but um, yeah, that could be interesting. Or Bevan could get another chance to compare himself to Hulkenberg, and Hulkenberg's been doing all right. I mean, I think Magnussen has just realised, yeah, Hulkenberg's better than me. I'm just going to, I'm probably out of a drive next year. I might just fuck around a bit and see what happens. Salba. Neither of these drivers had a wacky ad campaign or home race, so they were rightfully forgotten. Ge genuinely, I know it's a cliche, genuinely I don't remember a single thing about them. I do. Valtteri what? Bottas popped up on the driver for the day vote at the end. Oh yeah, yes, end, that is true. Oh, yeah. Which was what, really what was that fucking about? weird. I feel like we missed a Twitter storm there. <laughs> yes. It's probably, it's it's probably Reddit doing <coughs> that. Oh, they're crazy kids. Some weird cult following. We were following. doing that years ago. Did you orchestrate it, Terry? Did you? No, I don't have the power. Oh, okay. no, I don't like it. <laughs> Williams. Logan Sargent finished possibly his last ever race with the embarrassment of being shunted off by Kevin Magnussen on a bath salts rampage. <laughs> it's the only way I can explain what Kevin Magnussen's doing. He, had a, he, had a, he was in Florida. He had a, hug, a big huff of bath salts. <laughs> and then he was just driving into everyone. Off his tits. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon this is going to be... I don't think this is going to be the sergeant's last race. I mean, he's being hopeless, but this wasn't his fault. There were rumours before the race that it, was going to, it could be his last one. They were going to give him to Miami, and then... Which is why... Do you remember in qualifying when, when he went out in Q1, there was a radio message where he was just like, I'm such a fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... We were like, yeah, 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 we've been telling you this for... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally, he listens when we fire yeah, yeah. So I think I think Antonelli is going to be in the car for Imola. That's my top tip. Oh, maybe that's what I was mixing up with the Haas thing. Yeah. That's our customary insight and analysis where I can't remember what drivers <laughs> link to what team. Brilliant. And now it's time for the State of F1 with Terry Saunders. So Donald Trump, Florida man-made president, was at the Miami Grand Prix. Of course he fucking was. And obviously he went straight for the orange team, last seen drinking a bucket of papaya paint and cooing at the car because it's the nearest thing he has to a father. But him being there on one of McLaren's irregular wins has really thrust politics and sport into the spotlight because he was there to show that wherever he goes really does turn into gold and McLaren was just hoping he'd be very quiet and say nothing. Instead, he seems to be taking credit for the win and for Lando Norris existing and even for Senna Prost. And poor old Lando has been pushed into the sports politics debate by accidentally winning a race in a year when he wasn't supposed to. I'm going to read Lando's full quote here. But he saw me after. I thought, why does Lando speak? Kind of with a slightly Belgian accent. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, but he saw me after and he came up to congratulate me. So I guess an honour. Because whenever you have someone like this, it has to be an honour for you, for them to come up to you, to take time out of their life to pay their respect for what you've done. All right, Lando, you're not that fucking special. <laughs> He said he was my lucky charm because it was my win. So I don't know if he's going to come to more races now. God, how naive is this guy? Do you know that? Do you know that's Donald Trump? He's not. He's not interested in the races, you dick. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of special people, cool people, cool people that have been here this weekend. He's like, oh god. And the thing is, have you ever done an interview 
like being interviewed on something. I uh, I'm mostly I've done the interviews rather than yeah, being interviewed. Yeah. Around. There is a weird thing when sometimes you're just talking, you know, if you're having a conversation, and there's a part in the back of your mind goes, this is going to be used against me at some point. <laughs> and I think this is what's happening here. He suddenly realizes, and then he goes, so then, just to put both feet into the grave, he says, Donald is someone you've got to have a lot of respect for, in many ways, and for anyone like that who acknowledges what you can go out and do, and acknowledges the work ethic that goes into things, you've got to be thankful for that. And I was. So yeah, cool moment, and that's all. So now there's a lot of shit for him for saying he respects Trump and lying about Trump having a work ethic and saying it's an honour. Don't worry, I have a solution. And don't get me wrong, if most ex-presidents came into F1 to congratulate a winning driver, that'd be fine. But Trump isn't most ex-presidents, is he? He's currently on trial and he's gearing up for his re-election campaign and so being pictured with Norris winning his first race means he can send out one of his emails begging for money. But really, it's the FIA, Formula 1 and Zach Brown's fault for putting Lando in this position. It's one thing to be a Lewis Hamilton actively taking a knee for a cause you believe in. It's quite another to be thrust into the political foray because you're high on the adrenaline of winning a race and you're generally a polite young man. Look, Lando Norris could be a raving Trump fanatic or a Corbyn fundraiser. I don't really care. But sports stars of all disciplines need to know that speaking about politics is a dangerous game. You can't fuck around here. You've got to say it like you mean it. And if you mean it, by all means, grab it by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can do that now. You know, he's a race winner. You, you can do anything. Do what he likes. You just yeah. go up to presidents and kiss them or something. Uh, apparently, that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 reading that quote, I don't think... <sighs> it does come I'm across just as just off. unbelievably naive and not really knowing what he was doing. And the, yeah. yeah, I agree with you, to be honest. Like, I, don't, I don't think he's a fanatical Trump supporter. Well, I think, I think you like, summed it up la, nicely. La, 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 game and karting, la, la, la. Well, this is it. I think you summed it up nicely when you said he's generally a polite young man. That's, that's it, isn't it? He was just being polite. He didn't, he didn't want the controversy of turning around going, you're a fucking c- and I hate you because that would have just which caused is, too many problems. That this is a very this right. is a very good point that I should have put in the state of everyone, Ollie, which is that he had to turn around and, because by the time he was in that position after winning a race, to turn around and snub Trump is another thing. And this is the, it's difficult, isn't it? Because we've we, this is not the first time we've had controversial people at uh, F one races. I mean, Putin was at every single Sochi race, and you know, there's yeah. pictures of Lewis Hamilton shaking hands with him. But I think it's a little bit different when you know Putin essentially made the race happen. You know, it's it's pretty much his race, and the same with you know all the the Middle Eastern races and the Chinese races when there's officials there. You know, they've it's their race; they've put it on. This isn't Trump's race. He's just rocked up. Like, why was he even there in the after after the cool down thing? Like, just drawn to. I orange. don't really understand it. He had nothing yeah. to do with the race, really. He was just a bloke that was there. But do you remember there was something years ago? I think it was a Turkish Grand Prix where somebody had got up on the podium and given one of the prize winners thing and there was a controversy about it because he was a polit- he was a controversial politician the FIA, the FIA did a big thing about we can't have politics being brought into I mean, F1 blah blah blah, blah, blah. Always, like just... every race there'll be local government officials yeah giving out the trophies most of the races are only there because the government's been involved in some form you know um, you know Silverstone included I'm sure um, it's it's not unusual to have politics involved in racing at all. In fact, it's, they've been intertwined since the beginning of time. But um, this just seemed very... This this is different because this this was Mac- McLaren and the FIA bringing in someone who was not directly involved in the race <laughs> and seemingly being completely blind as to what would happen. Or they're doing yeah. it deliberately for reasons I don't understand. That's it from us. We'll be back even before there's more racing with another of Phil Troman's race previews. And we'll be answering your questions in Listener's Corner. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Troman's. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about the F1 Academy, which is a shame because it's uh, they're getting a new uh, they're getting a new documentary thing, which might be better than Drive to Survive, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. And to Terry Saunders. We haven't had time to talk about the thing that I actually talked about in the episode, which is about <laughs> <laughs> Newey and Andretti. So instead, we haven't had time to talk about Nico Holgenberg going to Audi, which we said we wouldn't talk about, but we have talked about. We oh, we forgot about, about it. it. We well, no, we haven't had time uh, to talk about it, Phil. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel where you can see as well as hear us. If you're watching on YouTube already, here's something just for you. Oh, wait, it's not coming through my phone. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Amazing. <laughs> However you want to watch or listen, just type in for F1 sake to something and see what comes up. Terry, where can people buy merch? ff1s.com forward slash shop, shop, shop. Thanks for listening. I've been Ollie Peart. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.